Hi, I'm uh, Alan Labreek, and it's my pleasure to speak with you today about Global M Health, an overview of mobile innovations and the evidence that's increasingly growing in this evolving field of the use of mobile tools for global health applications. I'm currently serving as the director of the Global M Health Initiative here at the Johns Hopkins University, which is a consortium of roughly 82 projects ranging from the schools of medicine, nursing, public health, and engineering, looking at ways to use this innovative emerging technology in both the clinical space and in public health practice, not just domestically, but around the world. So as a public health practitioner, this is often the way we see the world. This is a map that's the boundaries of which have been inflated based on the relative burden of maternal and neonatal mortality that those countries experience. We often find ourselves working in these very countries of Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia to try to alleviate some of these burdens that are experienced by those populations. However, in the past decade, we've seen transformations happen in even these most remote rural landscapes that have taken place in the domain of information and communications technologies where we see the pace of mobile technology penetration and reach have really transformed the uh, availability and access to mobile communications in the most resource poor settings of the world. This is however another way in which we can choose to perceive the uh, world today. This is a map of the social media networks. Uh, only eight, 10 million of the 850 million Facebook users. And what we see here in a map where no political boundaries have been drawn, the connections that are now made between the subcontinent, sub-Saharan Africa, South America, and the Northern Hemisphere are tremendous, really giving us the opportunity to think of new ways to deliver public health strategies in this uh, context. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, it's important to keep in mind what's known as the Gartner hype cycle. Whenever we introduce new technologies, there's always this peak of inflated expectations that seems to pursue that introduction of new technologies, rapidly descending into this trough of disillusionment. And often in the ICT, M Health, and eHealth world, this has been the case, where exciting new technologies have come with substantial hype and promise, but the data and evidence have not managed to maintain that level of expectation, and you end up with abandoned technologies that unfortunately are not used in the mainstream health systems. Our goal as technologists is to migrate technologies that are worth taking out of this trough up into what's known as the plateau of productivity, based on the evidence that they in fact do work. But these technologies have to have several qualifications. They have to be valid, they have to be accurate, they have to be reliable, dependable, useful, that is the, the users of the technologies have to find them to be useful, and of course they have to be valued by the system and by those using the technology. For me, M Health can be compressed into five C's. It's really harnessing this ubiquitous technology to collect data, to count events, and to connect individuals. Those are sort of the, the, the backbone functions of M Health. But it also gives us the opportunity to compress time, to change the, the delay that we see between the identification of a crisis or the identification of a severe event and the response to that event. We also here have the opportunity to use these technologies to open new windows of, of potential action. So creating opportunities for us to act in the continuum of care in areas of extreme vulnerability when women, children, and other stakeholders are at greatest risk and need of support. We like to see M Health in a new way over the past decade. We've, our conversation has shifted from thinking about M Health as one thing to really thinking about M Health as a way to take interventions that we know work. So there is about 150 published interventions that have been rigorously tested and whose efficacy is well known. And these are at the community level, at the first 
community outreach level and at the district tertiary care facility that we know can reduce mortality and morbidity if applied in a population setting. The challenge for us is to take these interventions of known efficacy and scale them into the level of effective coverage that's needed in order to have the greatest impact on population health. Now along the way, we run into health systems uh, structural problems, such as failure to follow guidelines, drug or essential commodity supply stockouts, or even the lack of performance tracking that, that uh, <clears throat> makes it challenging for us to, to provide the level of accountability we'd like in these contexts. And M Health can, in many ways, be seen as a way to fill these potholes or bridge these gaps that prevent us from reaching effective coverage using these uh, strategies. The real question we end up asking now for our M Health partners is to say, can you measure or and demonstrate an attributable change that's uh, that's directly a consequence of the M Health strategy? that you're implementing. So is your M Health improving adherence to guidelines? Is your M Health system reducing supply stockouts? And is it, for example, improving the tracking and, and response to poor performance in the field? And if so, then we can, in fact, make that connection between what we know works and the effective coverage that can maximize the impact in a population. So over 80% of member countries around the world of the WHO report having at least one M Health initiative in their country. Even low-income countries from Rwanda to China to Bangladesh are building and implementing national M Health strategies and programs. Here's a, a, just a snapshot from one of our counterparts at the GSMA who has demonstrated just the, the sheer number of projects in this this region of the world, which I shared with you earlier, as being some of the highest risk areas for maternal and newborn child health. But this has also led to a criticism of pilotitis in this domain. So those of you who are clinically uh, trained will recognize this term, uh, the itis term, as in inflammation. But pilotitis is the criticism that there are just too many pilot or demonstration projects in M Health that don't seem to go to the next level of scale where they are integrated and implemented as part of the health system. This is a map of Uganda just showing the wide number of NGOs and other agencies implementing M Health studies. It in fact led to a letter from the Minister of Health saying to stop uh, implementing new M Health projects until the ministry had approved this uh, new project and that it was aligned with the goals and objectives of that uh, country. Recently working with colleagues at the WHO and with uh, colleagues at Harvard and other institutions uh, around the world, we've tried to distill what it is we are doing with M Health solutions in a non-technology focused way. And this led us to what we call the 12 common M Health applications. We talk about client education and behavior change communication. We talk about using mobile tools to utilize their onboard sensors and point of care diagnostics. We use M Health to sustain registries and track vital events. We use M Health to collect data and report it in a more rapid turnaround so that we have data on in real time. We use M Health to supplement electronic health records and to provide electronic decision support to providers who are in the field or working at the front lines of uh, public health. Provider to provider communication through user groups, consultations. We often referred to this in the past as telemedicine, but now with mobile tools, those catchment areas have expanded way beyond the facilities and fixed sites where telemedicine uh, used to be available. But essential functions such as provider work planning and scheduling, making sure that community health workers who have to reach vast populations with their specific uh, tasks can do so in a systematic and organized way. Managing human resources, making sure that frontline providers, deliverers of vaccines are where and when they need to be uh, supported in the field where they're providing care. Supply chain management, 
making sure that, as we mentioned earlier, stockouts are not a main reason why people don't receive care in hard to reach rural places because supply chains have not been maintained. And then find, finally an emerging area which I think is very exciting and it, it is the, the ability to transfer money using mobile tools and incentivize people for their performance based on the transactions that can now be conducted on a mobile phone. There are many examples of mHealth in various stages of sophistication, development and testing and these include strategies such as Text for Baby or similar programs that are used uh, to send targeted messages to pregnant women about how to manage their pregnancy and their uh, newborn. Globally, Text for Baby evolved into this project known as MAMA, where women across the world in multiple countries now receive text messages if they're subscribed to this service, uh, telling them about specific symptoms that they might be experiencing during pregnancy or ways to care for their newborn in the first months of life. This is a strategy that the U.S. government has actually delivered to a number of countries as part of their international aid uh, strategy. In Nigeria and Ghana, uh, companies are using text messaging and mobile health uh, tools to monitor counterfeit drugs and to empower clients to make sure the drugs that they purchase are in fact authentic. Uh, Novartis and other co uh, collaborators are using mHealth to strengthen supply chains and make sure that essential commodities get to where they need to be in rural populations in sub-Saharan Africa. Mushahidi used a number of technologies, including mobile strategies, to map emerging outbreaks of cholera in Haiti uh, in the post-earthquake uh, uh, event. Frontline SMS is a group using uh, text messaging to improve adherence to complex HIV regimens to ensure that patients can take their drugs on time and manage their disease or chronic condition uh, in an effective way. Other systems such as the Vitality Glow Cap offer new and innovative ways to get patients to adhere to their medication. Here this, this pill bottle actually glows and starts to send text messages to you and your family members to make sure that you haven't missed uh, a dose of your essential medication because you've forgotten. Here at Hopkins, we have a system called Emoca with our colleagues uh, Robert Bollinger and Larry Chang are leading across the street, helping frontline providers receive high quality training on the job and refresher training after in person training has been completed through interactive videos, quizzes, and other multimedia tools on their mobile phones, helping to sustain the level of, of training that they received in the classroom. In Bangladesh, our colleagues in Power and the University of Toronto are using mobile phones to breach sensitive topics, to talk about issues such as breast cancer in places where, me, in places where talking about breast cancer is actually <coughs> socially difficult. In places like Bangladesh, our colleagues in Power Health and the University of Toronto are using mobile tools to breach sensitive topics such as breast cancer in socially conservative populations where talking about these things are, is, is challenging and difficult. So through the use of mobile video, they're able to now speak about sensitive issues and, um, and get people to care if they need to be referred for further investigation. Our colleagues at Stanford have developed this attachment to simple camera phones that allow frontline health workers who may not be trained in specific scanning for buccal lesions to look for early signs of cancer in uh, individuals who are exposed to uh, chewed tobacco and other oral uh, pathogens and, and drugs. Our colleagues at the Garmin Foundation have developed a system called MoTeC which allows them to support frontline health workers and connect those health workers to the patients whom they're trying to serve. The project Moana in Zambia is an example of that compression of time where infant HIV PCR testing has been reduced substantially in terms of its turnaround time, about half in most of the sites where it's been tried, by enabling results to be sent back to the providers and the frontline clinics through uh, secured text message systems. More ambitious systems such as this one en enabled by WHO, HRP, and the National Rural Health Mission in India 
uh, have really tried to cover the entire continuum of care from pre-pregnancy all the way through childhood with a number of interventions from risk assessment to uh, safe birth planning, checklists in the postnatal period, immunizations in early infancy, and then uh, childhood care, all in a modular basis on a smartphone. But new technologies are constantly emerging. Here we have the portable ultrasound, the remote sensor to allow us to monitor fetal heart rate and other conditions of the mother remotely just using simple Bluetooth technology. An RFID technology, which allows you to now track entire patient records using simple wristbands that are worn around the child's hand or on a mother's necklace. And then, of course, the emergence of mobile microscopy. This is an early prototype of a device that allowed people to use a simple camera phone again to visualize ma malaria parasites in remote rural populations. So the question really is, do we find ourselves now at a place where We've let a thousand flowers of innovation bloom in the M Health space, and the time has come to pick a promising bouquet of the most, most innovative technologies that have the evidence base behind them to suggest that they can actually uh, affect and impact the, the, our ability to deliver care to the most disadvantaged and hard to reach populations across the globe. We have to, however, remember that M Health does not work in a vacuum. Just a phone and a health worker and a pregnant woman does not, in fact, make a successful M health intervention. We must be thinking about the upstream and downstream services and connections that have to be present in order for that M health solution to be maximally effective. It's the connectivity of the mobile phone to a broader uh, system that enables us to really capitalize on the impact of uh, mobile technologies. So being able to mobilize funding, transport, usable data, and actually provide high quality care to those most in need is really the innovation space where I think mHealth is the most exciting. We talk about meaningful use of data and in fact in these contexts where, where data often is piled up and, and collected extensively but never used because it just is not accessible, we can really change this paradigm to where data is now available and, and usable to those of us who use uh, data for policy decisions and improving the quality of care. But we have to remember that there are certain elements of successful projects. We have to keep in mind the need for local partnerships. We have to understand the qualitative research that has to go into building a good system. Building local capacity where it's the people who are implementing these systems who can actually manage and control the, the system functions. We have to focus on the end users and the people who we are targeting and not just develop these solutions in closed boardrooms in the developed world. Systems have to be adaptable and they have to have local stakeholder and leadership engagement from the very beginning of uh, the innovation stage. Pete, the recent report by the PricewaterhouseCoopers group has really stated very eloquently that M Health is probably going to happen anyway. There's an inevitability about it, so people aren't looking carefully, talking about the, uh, the evidence base. And others at the FDA have said that, hype or not, it is becoming part of life. But I think even though we may be surrounded by this technology, and that the excitement about this technology continues to grow, it is critical for us in places where resources are limited to ask the right questions and to measure the impact that these strategies actually have on improving the health outcomes of populations around the world. We have to think about, are the systems interoperable with the existing health systems? Is there a way to integrate these strategies into the workflow of the workers who we have on the ground, and the clinicians who are serving the populations who we're aiming to target with our mHealth solutions? Is our, 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 our solutions intelligent? Do they enhance the capacity of those frontline health workers through innovative decision support systems? We have to think about the increasing use of social media and community networks and harness those innovative new domains of, of health in order to maximize the impact of our M Health strategies. We also be, have to be able to measure outcomes and demonstrate that the investment that we make in these technologies is actually benefiting outcomes on the, uh, on the other end of uh, the public health equation. And of course we have to think about engagement. How do these tools engage the users, engage the, the providers and clients and the health systems 
in, in with a long-term view of sustainability. I sometimes feel like this gentleman, I don't know if you can see him very well, but he's protesting, what do we want? Evidence-based change. When do we want it? After peer review. And it's a little cynical uh, way to, to look at sort of the, the traditional public health approach, but evidence is necessary. Health investments in global health are driven by more than market forces. We have limited resources in many of these contexts, and we need stringent cost-effectiveness-based planning. We've emphasized for two decades that evidence-based decision-making has to be the mainstay of how we deliver public health. Donors are increasingly asking for transparency and scrutiny of investments. And there's a population-side increase in sophistication demanding improved quality of care. We also are building on many decades now of political fatigue. People have invested in technologies for decades, but yet have not seen, in many cases, the delivered promises of those technologies. So we have to understand that we're coming in with mHealth on the tail of uh, several decades of this fatigue. We have to stop asking, does it work? But we really have to focus on asking about what is the strategy? What's the underlying public health intervention that's being delivered by mobile health? What is the constraint that you're addressing? And is the approach or the content of the strategy valid? What indicators and evaluation methods can support the claims that are being made? And then how do we move from demonstration projects to integration projects in the mHealth space? Governments are looking for evidence to generate policy and strategies. NGOs and implementers are asking what strategies in mHealth should be integrated into our health programs. And innovators or researchers are asking about gaps or constraints that they can then use to address using their uh, research uh, priorities. We've developed sophisticated logic models, which I'm not going to go into in much detail, but basically to explain to non-mHealth uh, policymakers and, and implementers how these different strategies from real-time data access and logistics monitoring or on-demand training and point-of-care diagnostics lead to things like supply chain integrity, provider competence, client self-efficacy, that ultimately have the goals of improved coverage, improved quality of care, improved health behaviors, and ultimately improved health outcomes. We need to think about a claims-based approach to evidence. How are we asking things about cost? Are we claiming that the mHealth strategy will reduce risks? Well, do we need to think about what policy, training, and alternative investments could be made to make the case for mHealth investments? And then we have to ask ourselves whether we're measuring process efficiencies, accountability, coverage, or quality as our metrics of success when we measure the impact of uh, mHealth. There's been a lot in the literature over the past six months about the readiness of mHealth to scale. Um, there was an excellent systematic review by our colleague Caroline Free at the London School of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene looking at uh, a number of domains of, of M health and health system strengthening. And unfortunately, the overall conclusion for many of these strategies were less than enthusiastic given, I think, the limited evidence that we have to work with that is rigorously co collected and that can really point us in the right direction. The body of evidence that is strong, shown here in red, is really still very limited. And this is a study from a couple of years ago, but the landscape has not changed very dramatically. When you think about the body of evidence that exists for most domains, technical satisfaction, clinical outcome, accuracy, much of this is low strength of evidence, observational data, and not rigorous uh, scientifically evaluated data. So if we want to move the conversation from beyond these closed boardrooms where we've been talking about mHealth for quite some time now, we need to reach beyond just the mHealth space, like we're doing with this, uh, this MOOC uh, training course, where we're able to, to, to reach beyond the converted and learn to speak the language of health decision makers. We need to understand the decision making process and the role that evidence plays in that decision making process. We need to stop taking shortcuts and measure mHealth impact and mHealth outcomes in a more rigorous and uh, definitive way. And we need to support, as a community, a high threshold of information quality, which is applicable to every other domain, as it should also be with mHealth. 
With that, I hope uh, you found this to be an interesting uh, landscape of what is the M Health uh, world, especially coming from the research and uh, evaluation perspective. And if you have any other questions, I'm happy to uh, try to address them via email. And do feel free to visit our website where we do talk about a lot of the projects in which we have ongoing around uh, the university and beyond. With that, I thank you very much.